I would like to invite Ms. Varna Reka Chinta, who is a research scholar at IIT Hyderabad and also a consultant psychologist with Mochan Neuro Center in Hyderabad, to present her research on perceptual and phonological difficulties in multilingual children with dyslexia, evidence from Telugu native speakers. While they are setting up, let me just give you a little bit of introduction about Ms. Varna. She has been involved in many research projects and developed assistive tool for improving visual attention for dyslexic readers. She was formerly and employed as a therapist at the Lakshmi Neuro Center in giving cognitive training for post-surgery cases, developmentally delayed and autistic and dyslexic children. So we'd like to welcome Ms. Varna. Here you go, you can have the mic. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you all for being here for my presentation. And I'm Suvarna and Professor Bapi Raju and Bipin Indruki are the other two co-authors of this paper. So first, I would like to have a question to all the audience. I know you're all uh, experts in dyslexia. We are, I'm just started my research in this. So I would like to ask you, like, how to diagnose a child with dyslexia in the absence of a standardized diagnostic tool? And the second thing is, like, is it necessary to screen dyslexia <coughs> in the native languages if the child is from a multilingual background? So I expect this answer from Angela and other all, Everett and other people. So coming back to today's presentation, first I would like to present three cases, three different cases. This boy, oh, I'm sorry, this okay. So this boy is now is doing his B.Tech, but uh, he came to me when he was 10 years old. At that time, they found a big issues with reading and writing. His handwriting is very poor and uh, very uh, sloppy handwriting. He couldn't read even a single word at that time. So somehow we identified him as having not dyslexia. We found that some reading difficulties and we started giving an intervention. And he was in continuous intervention from that time. And by 10, he started able to read and write. And 10th is a public exam. It's like almost like O level over here. So he scored some 8.2 uh, CGPA in 10th. And again, uh, he continuously passed like 8.5 in inter plus 2. And now he's doing BTEC second year. The second example is this is a female uh, Telugu native speaker. And now she's 18 years old. Uh, when she was 10 years old, she came to Singapore. And she was in, admitted in some primary school. And after that, uh, she continued her studies. And she failed in O level in English. And not identified as dyslexic over here also. And she's back to India. And somehow she, uh, she wrote the exam again. And she passed in Indian uh, examination. And now she's doing her BTEC second year. But still have a comprehension issues. And many other issues, comorbid issues are there. Even she's not yet diagnosed completely that she is a dyslexic. And third is a Marathi native speaker. It is a neighbor, neighboring state. Uh, this girl also came around 10 years to Hyderabad, like to our state. Uh, and she joined in a government school where the public schools, uh, we have both the mediums, Telugu medium and English medium. The native language medium and the instructions will be and in English. So she joined in a Telugu medium and she's from a Marathi native speaker, if you observe this. So the language instructions are totally different. And she couldn't cope up with the syllabus. And she failed in seventh, and she's a school dropout. So I feel this is a very important issue, like, if you consider that. So I gave a broad uh, examples, like, what happens if we don't have a native language uh, a screening test, if you're not having a screening test in a native language. Sorry. <laughs> so coming, I'm talking about uh, Telugu language. So let me tell you a brief description about a Telugu language. So Telugu is a Dravidian language basically, and now it, in India it was primarily spoken by two, two states, Telangana and uh, Andhra Pradesh, and 74 million people will speak this language in uh, all over the world, and it has three major dialects, and Telugu script has 56 uh, graphemes and allographs, and you can see the geminates are vertical stack, uh, vertically stacked. Can you see this ice? We call it as kallu will be written like this. Oh, it, it, has, it has gone in this somehow. OK, consonant clusters are there. Like Krishna is like, one is, uh, this is a consonant cluster. So orthographically, it's a bit complex thing. So coming to this research, it's a big uh, Telugu native speakers. It is like very diversified. Like one has to look at three languages. I'm sorry. What happening to this every time? So 
coming to this like you need to take care of the three different things one is we need to see what type of dyslexia is whether it is deep or peripheral and the language we need to consider whether the person belongs to multilingual or monolingual and orthography whether it is opaque or transparent you see here that telugu all the most of the schools use three language system so they are trained in opaque and transparent both hindi and telugu are the two local languages and english is an official language over there so they get trained in both the things and each language has three to four dialects and they lack uh, language independent tests so now the problem when you see the english native speakers you can see the very uh, precise problems like so the language is monolingual so here by and multilingual so the orthographic consistency is very regular in english and here it is oh sorry irregular in english and here it is see the regular <coughs> orthography is basically grapheme and phonemes here we have akshara based which is alpha syllable and instructions are phoneme based and we have a rote learning kind of a thing you easily get mastered in it after a one year of practice and the reading difficulties are very high in english they said it is not yet identified and they have a standardized diagnostics tools are available we don't have anything and the prevalence rate is estimated to be 5 to 17% whereas in this we are not yet identified they develop many theories and models but we are not yet proposed an intervention or design and not yet available in our place so coming to the telugu native speakers we have some anecdotal evidences about the, we don't have any much research on this so the anecdotal evidences is they have the general repetition deletion and substitution as in english and telugu and they do a lot of uh, guess work and they found some of the migration errors like for example fry can be read as fired and between uh, that is it is within within a word and there is between words also when you ask them to read the cane love they'll read it as lane cow or lane cane kind of errors so when you see the telugu speaking especially this is the orthography i want to show some examples when you ask them to read this is an akaru word they read it as aruku which means here we can see the vowel the kind of mistakes one is the vowel they changed and they did the migration can you k has been replaced this position k has been came to the last and and substitute is something else here who has been added and ru has been uh, replaced to the second one so this is a majorly a migration and substitution kind of an error in a one word and guru read as garbu here they did the deletion part and mannu is a word and they read it as manna it's also deletion and here aavu is a word and they read it as aapu totally the substituted so these are the kinds of errors they make in telugu and if you see even orthographically it is a bit complex it is very difficult to identify the differences are the lighting is laser okay so here you can see the difference is very minute bu and pu the things are very minute and in ba this is ba and po so the differences are very minute so orthographically very complex thing so i uh, what we did is i told you i started uh, basically i started a ground work like to find out what kind of dyslexics are there what could be the problems in this language so i took the dual 2012 uh, basic classification of dyslexia with uh, dyslexia has been classified as peripheral and central based on the reading models if if you remember the colhart's reading model if the person if the uh, impairment at the orthographic visual analysis stage that leads to peripheral dyslexia and under peripheral dyslexia letter position attentional neglect dyslexia and visual dyslexia and these are the examples of it and if the person is, if the impairment is at the later stages of the reading either it is lexical or sub lexical stages so then one can find a surface dyslexia phonological dyslexia deep dyslexia and vowel letter dyslexia so now what i did is i try to identify like what category they are falling in with this so when you see in across the languages according to idi 2015 these are the statistics of bilinguals basically the prevalence rate is estimated to be around 5 to 17% in english japanese kanji is like 5 to 6% and kana is 2 to 3% and chinese 3.9 
and German 9, 1.9 to 2.6%. And the incidence of dyslexia in India seems to be 10 to 15% according to Ted Chatterjee, but uh, uh, this says that because of there is no biological tests in it, so the uh, prevalence rate is becomes very sensitive in it. So we are not sure because it only depends on the test performance test and the way how they are uh, analyzing it that depends on more on it. So, oh my God. So now we see some of the uh, bilingual studies. Uh, According to Abu Rabia and Siegel, they said like Arabic English bilinguals performed well in English than their dyslexic monolinguals. And Weedel and Kondo in English Japanese bilinguals, they said that showed more impairment in English but not in Japanese. And Chang and Hoche says that they found similar reading difficulties in both the languages. So you see a lot of controversy over here even in bilingual studies also. So in coming to the Indian languages, they did the two studies from Gupta and Jamal. They did in Hindi and English bilinguals and they found made fewer errors in Hindi than English. And then Joshi, I'm sorry. So, so Joshi and they did in Kannada and English bilingual showed similar reading impairment. Just like this is Kannada is uh, relating to the Chung and Ho studies like they found a parallel is similar to this whereas Gupta and Jamal's uh, study is similar to this thing Abu Rabia studies like they found more in the English languages. So according to Lallier they say that studies have shown that reading deficits did not manifest when bilingual dyslexic children read in transparent orthographies. So what I did is like we don't have as I said we don't have a basic uh, knowledge with this kind of we are still at the identification and diagnostic stage so it is not clear like wow, is it dyslexia is visual auditory phonological or attention related problems so I started my research with understanding all the models of it first started with generic model of Dahanes which shows that there is an impairment at uh, visual context and um, which is uh, top down attention process deficits are there and second is the dual root model of Kohlhertz and third is spelling model of Karmaza and granularity and transparency model of Weedle and dual coding model of Pavios. I took all this based on these models I came up with a new model saying that under the sensation attention and perception when a person encounters a text the respective orthographic or when a person encounters a speech, the respective phonological lexicon will get activated and there is a continuous interaction between these two. So here he applied the granularity and transparency uh, theory and there are four combinations are there of the languages, the coarse and opaque, for example, kanji is an option, kanji will be uh, under, falling under this and coarse and transparent, most of the Indian languages are akshara based are falling under this category and fine and transparent is Italian and fine and opaque is an English language. So when you see this thing, the reading uh, roots are like this. So these type of languages, actually it is not the uh, language, you need to see the combination of these things. So when you see these combinations, this lexical root is activated and this leads to the types of dyslexia. So it will become a bit easy when you compare this way. And uh, for fine opaque English and French as an examples, and this is falling in a non-lexical route and having a reading, high reading errors and phonological dyslexia. So this is basically a general model. So, so, so I took a part approach like uh, understanding dyslexia in a perceptual way to find out whether is it a perceptual or a phonological deficit in Telugu native speakers. So in this the pass is a, you might be aware of this pass theory, theory of planning, attention, simultaneous and successive processing. It is one of the cognitive assessment systems. So in this we applied, we conducted these tests understanding in this special way and this is again related to the reading model. If you go back to the reading model there you can see for each combination of one level of problem you have one kind of an issue. So phoneme awareness 
we have done this substitution, deletion, segmentation, spoonerism and non-word under RAN. We adapted this color, alphabets, digits and objects and laksharas have been we modified for the Telugu native speakers and auditory discrimination like speech sound discrimination and we did another minimal pair dictation. This all we did in Telugu, Telugu language basically and attention network has been conducted to find out the alerting and orienting executive networks and visual system has been con uh, seen with eye movement and word picture identification tasks. So the approach is we initially approached the schools, integrated schools and we took the permission from the parents and we collected the data from the schools and then we chose randomly uh, chosen 22 uh, uh, dyslexic and 22 normal kids and all these have been, uh, children have been diagnosed in the local uh, st state government institute, the NIMH, National Institute, of uh, National Institute of Mental Health in Hyderabad and they uh, follow a protocol of uh, diagnosing dyslexia by identifying, uh, testing the MESIC, they'll do the, this is an Indian adaptation of MESIC basically. So when they do the IQ test, conal spelling and reading test and DTLD is a diagnostic test for uh, dyslexia and diagnostic test for learning disability and we do the attention deficit ADHD test also because we want to rule out that we don't want to take any of the hyperactive students in our and other neurological uh, issues like the ch if the child has a neurological issue like uh, in Asperger's we want to rule out the students. So we didn't took the sample from them. So we conducted the test. And these are the results actually. So, so on this week uh, we performed ANOVA. I'm giving a, actually an abstract of the old experiments here. And I'll show you the other one like the, we found that poor performance in sponerism, but not in substitution, deletion, segmentation, they are good. Even at decoding also they are, did well. And only with the, we found a bit of differences in the speed, like this processing speed is a bit low in this. Otherwise they are intact, their uh, phonological ability, you can say it as intact. And reading, uh, rapid automatization naming, they found a deficit in speed and all the activities. And attention ability, when we tested, they found a high reaction time and low accuracy and deficits in alerting and executive net functions are visible. And under visual processing, we found there is a bit of differences in their eye movement pattern also. They found a non-linear pattern corresponds to the normal readers and uh, auditory discrimination they did are inconsistent results are there. They are not able to, suppose if I uh, play a sound of two uh, uh, similar words like ba and pa, two, two sounds, one like it has been repeated three times and at three times the consistency is not there. Sometimes they said it is right, the similar words similar, they both the sounds are same and sometimes they press it as no. It's, they are not similar. That shows they are not given attention to it. The processing deficits are there at the attention level. So we found some of, uh, even we conducted the minimal pair test, which uh, errors found in vowel letters, but not on the consonants level. So with all these results, we did a logistic regression. Sorry. We did a logistic regression. So in order to find out like what could be the predictive model, in order to find out the relative uh, predictor, which is a good important predictor among all these things. If you see uh, the names are not very clear over here, like this is attention, orienting, executive, rating scale, reaction time, accuracy, chronological age, this is a reading age, spelling age, IQ, phonological discrimination, substitution, Elimination and this is non word reading, spoonerism, RAN, BP, and others visual processing and auditory processing. So, we found like a, when we want to try to make a model, so this has been a very good uh, predictor. When you see that reading age, that is uh, among multilinguals, we found this to be a very good predictor. And the second is a ver verbal working memory test, that is, the spoonerism acts as a other better model. So, we feel that we, as we don't have any uh, kind of a um, proper diagnostics tool, I feel if we include these two things as a major thing uh, in a local languages for a multilingual people and that those who are into the transparent languages, who are reading transparent language, that I think it could be predict a better eating model. So thank you. So. So this, as of now, this study is limited to only to Telugu native speakers, but later we want to test in other transparent languages and see how far it can be helpful. So thank you.
Melissa. Yeah, you, you have issue. If time is there, we can, we can go okay. for ahead. Aphasia, yeah, okay. aphasia, when uh, you have a bilingual, if you are agreed, uh, you can have uh, differences, depend on languages, you know? When you have a multilingual aphasia. children, yeah. even aphasia could be different. Yes, definitely there would be a difference. Yeah, I agree that. Uh, yes, 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 absolutely. I would like to ask if those errors that you have said, are they wrong? all'interno delle parole o anche in singoli grafetti. Oh, okay. When uh, you talk about some mistakes uh, yeah. um, in your study, yeah. you are referring to single letters or uh, also inside the, in the, the word, word. Yeah, uh, in so. a word there are two things are there. Okay. In attentional dyslexia you see a differences that migration of okay. letters the occurs between the two words. Okay. Whereas in visual dyslexia okay. Uh, letter position dyslexia, mm -hmm. it occurs within a word. Okay, within so a word. Within a yeah. word, and there are two different names they're given. Okay. One is a uh, letter position dyslexia mm -hmm. for with singular word, and there is a migration within between two words, it is a uh, attention dyslexia. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Warner. Can I invite um, our Chief Financial Officer from DAS to give her a token of appreciation for the presentation? Thank you so much.